Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Robin. It is JavaScript Tuesday, and today we are going to talk about promises. We're going to try and answer these questions. Why were they added to the language? Because they, they were released in 2015. Up until then, it had been 20 years of JavaScript without promises. So why are they added? How do they work? And should you be using them? And I'll answer this last one right now with an emphatic yes. You should be using them. I, I think they're an absolutely essential, even required part of modern JavaScript. I can't remember the last time I wrote a, a script of any consequence that didn't have a promise in it. Whether I wrote it or, or it was returned from something else, they are absolutely essential, so you are in a good place. Uh, I'm going to refer to callbacks a lot, and I recently did a video on callbacks, so if you're, you're hazy on what they are or if I, if I keep using it and you're not quite familiar with it, I'll drop that link in the description. It's only five, six minutes long, and, and it will make a huge difference. They are absolutely critical for understanding promises, at least, <laughs> at least how I'm going to, uh, to describe them. To start off with the why, we're going to have to go back to a little bit of history. Um, as I said, the why, they were released in 2015 with ES6. JavaScript updates, they come out about every year now uh, with what are called uh, ECMAScript updates. I have a playlist I'll drop in the description as well. They were not common the first 20 years of JavaScript. They tried to be. Some crazy things happened in JavaScript. Uh, I, I have a history a video that I'll throw, to, throw in there as well. But the, the important thing here is that in 2015, promises were added. What was going on before that? JavaScript is an event-driven language. I've been using it for almost 30 years. I can't believe saying that out loud sounds so horrible, but I've been using it a long time, and it is an event-driven language. It is asynchronous, okay? So what I mean by that is that most of the JavaScript, a lot of times that you write in a given file, right? You open up a browser and your JavaScript runs, a lot of the code won't run when the browser starts up. A lot of the code is gonna be in callbacks and it is gonna be dependent on events. So we have, say, um, add an event listener. AEL stands for add event listener, so I don't have to, don't have to write out the whole thing. Uh, and that thing will take, we'll say it is a click event, and then we will have a callback, right? And a bunch of stuff happens in here, right? We've got a whole bunch of code. But when does that code run? It doesn't run when the browser loads your JavaScript file. It loads when the event happens. So all of this, if you're a Java or a C Sharp or a C programmer coming from some traditional language, Python, this can be really frustrating because if you have a line up here and a line down here, whatever happens in here, you're gonna to expect to happen before that. And that's not how it works. This code isn't gonna get run until that click happens, right? So JavaScript being event driven and callback heavy, stuff doesn't happen when you expect it to. So if you've got, if you've got code down here that's dependent on something in here, there's only one way to handle that. This here is a function, which means it has its own scope. And everything inside here is scoped to that function. So unless you create a, a variable outside of that and, and override it in there, which gets really confusing, again, being asynchronous and not knowing when stuff is gonna happen, you, you have stuff in here that maybe your main program needs. So again, this line down here maybe needs to know what happens in there and that can be really confusing, okay? So having written JavaScript for almost 30 years and also knowing Java and C Sharp and C and Python and so on, JavaScript is good. This is a good pattern. This paradigm is intentional. Now it's not meant for every, every application, but this is an awesome paradigm. It requires a little finesse to be able to understand, okay? What if we're in this situation, we've got this line up here, we've got a click listener, and then we've got this line down here that has to know what happened in there. Until 2015, the only way that we could do that led to something called callback hell, where we had some kind of event, right? let's say it's a click listener, okay? And we had, we had this thing that needed to know what happened inside there we'd have another event or function that would run inside there. Right? So maybe you have a click, another click that needs to happen once that click has happened, and you've got another click or submit or whatever that needs to happen, okay? And you end up going farther and farther this way to where you've got, no, no joke, <laughs> I had files back in the late 2000s that were tabbed over 11, 12 times, something like that. It was more common in Node.js, maybe in the, the early 2010s, where I have a, a database request 
and I, I need another one that is dependent on that one and another one that's dependent on that one and so on and you end up like 10, 12 over. Again, this is called callback hell and it was awful. But we had no, we had really no way around it other than writing your functions in a, in a goofy way because sometimes what happens down here has to know what happens in there and the only way to, to fix that is to put it inside there, to give it the same scope or risk writing some global variable up here. It might not be written when you think it's going to be written. Cr causes crazy, uh, crazy errors or, or difficult to, to troubleshoot errors. Let me clean this up quick. So 2015 rolls around, we're 20 years into JavaScript and we're still writing crazy code like this, or we've got globals that nobody can, can troubleshoot because you have no idea when they're being set. And in 2015, JavaScript is not a toy anymore. What, what I call the JavaScript revolution, I don't, maybe it has a real name, but the Reacts, the Angulars, they have come out. We've got big UI frameworks, big teams writing serious projects in JavaScript with huge code bases. We've got Node.js, so we're, we're writing backend code in JavaScript, right, essentially. You've got developers coming from Java, C Sharp, C, Python, and they, they hate this. And I, I totally get it. I wrote JavaScript for 20 years. I just accepted it. I, I didn't like it either, but well, if you're going to write JavaScript, this is, this is how it's going to be. That is the why these are necessary because we need to let JavaScript be JavaScript. One of the worst things that it makes me cringe when I see someone who doesn't understand the language trying to use set timeouts to force JavaScript to, to behave like Python or, or C Sharp or, or whatever. That's, that's a terrible thing to do because you shouldn't be using JavaScript if you do that. There are other languages that, that already behave that way. We want to let JavaScript be fast, be asynchronous, be event driven, do things as fast as possible, which is what makes it a great language. But as developers, we need to get away from this. We don't want to be writing code like that. So we'll hop over to our code editor in just a second, but I'll, I'll, briefly, I'll briefly show you the how here on the board. We, we talked about the why. I already answered should. Yes, you should. How does it help? Well, we've got a line and we've got another line and some, some block of code here. This, uh, this is an async thing. It's a, it's a click listener. It's a database request, whatever it is. And then below it here, we have a line and this needs that to be done. We don't want that to run until this is finished. Now we could move it in to that block of code, like I showed you before, put that, put it inside the callback, but we're trying to get away from that. How can we keep them at the same level and make it obvious that this is dependent on that? Wait until it's finished or don't run the code until this is done. And if this happens to fail, we need some way down here to let our program know something went wrong in this async thing, right? This is supposed to run but there's an error, right? Either way, whatever happens inside that block, we want it to look more normal, more human and, and, and still JavaScript, okay? Let's hop over to our code editor and I will show you how we write them. Over to my code editor, I've got a simple HTML file. A lot has happened over the last nine years, so I can't show you everything. We're just gonna do a basic example so you see the syntax and in the next video, I'll, I'll continue on and, and, and we'll get closer to modern promises. We've got a button tag with just the word click in it and an ID of BTN, a script tag, literally logging the line that we're on so that you can see how the process goes. Line seven, we create a variable called button. We grab the, the thing with the ID of button and we store it in there. Okay, we're gonna make our first promise. So I'm gonna do const p1 equals. It is a new promise, open, close. You see the, the word new, that means this thing better be a constructor and it, it has a capital letter here. So, so that means we're gonna make a special JavaScript object. This is part of JavaScript. We don't have to bring it in and do anything. It takes a one argument. It is a callback. So callbacks galore. We'll call the first parameter here resolve and the second one reject. Let's make a couple notes. This callback here, this callback runs immediately. It's not going to wait. It will run as soon as it gets here. So this code runs right away. Resolve. What is that? Well, it is a function that we call that lets our outside in all caps, because that's what we're going for, program know that this promise is done. We can pass it a value so that outside of our program, we will be able to see it. Alrighty, that is what resolve does. We'll make another note here. Reject does the same thing as resolve, but 
is for failure. So it means that our promise is done, but something went wrong so that the outside program can make, can make whatever decision it needs to. Okay, we will we'll handle all that in just a second. Let's let's take our button and we'll do add an event listener. What type of listener? We will add a click listener. That is gonna have a callback. Again, callbacks are everywhere. Inside here, let's literally console.log line 15 so that we can see this has run. Okay, so just quick step back. P1, new promise. This thing runs immediately. That's how the promises work. This one though is not going to run until the user has clicked on this button. So console.log line 15. Let's grab the time. So I'll do a new date object open close and I'll put on the end of that get time open close just so that we'll have the time and I will run the resolve function and I will hand it time. This is gonna signal to the outside program that our promise is done and the value we're gonna to send to it here is, is our variable on line 16. How do we find out out here? Well, we grab our promise, so P1, that's the variable that we put our promise in, P1 dot then open close, and this takes a callback as its parameter as well. So then we'll run when the promise has called resolve. Value, literally value, will be the value we gave resolve. So walking through it one more time, p1.then, and I'll, I'll go ahead and put a, a log in here, console.log, line 24 has run. This then will not run until resolve is called. Why this resolve? Well, because p1.then, this is our promise, this is our promise callback. Once resolve is called inside here, the then will fire into action. It knows its turn is, is come, and the value will be what? It'll be whatever we handed resolve, which in this case will be time. Now this is important to remember. We cannot put down here console.log time. This will error because time doesn't exist in this scope. It only exists inside of this, this function. It can't see time, but it can see value, and value is what we care about. Value is the same thing as time, we sent it over when the, when the function resolved, okay? At the bottom, I'll put console.log line 28 just so that we can see the progression. It's gonna go. Line six, uh, let's put one in here. It's gonna goof up all of our lines. Console.log line nine just so that we can see this thing runs immediately. I'm gonna have to update these. Line 16 is not gonna run until we click. Come down here. Line 25 is not going to run until we have clicked right after 16 because when, when resolve runs, the then will run. Line 29, that will run immediately because these callbacks will have to wait their turn. Over to our browser. Okay, there's line six, line nine, and line 29. Line six, that one runs immediately. Line nine, that one runs immediately again because it's inside of our callback. Line 29 ran immediately. As soon as I click, we get line 16. That's back over here inside of our click listener right there. That called resolve, when resolve got called, the then kicked into action, we got 25, we got 25, and we got our timestamp. That is the basics of promises. We will go farther, and I will link that video as soon as it is done, but I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Work on your promises.